Hi, I'm Lenny Pinna. I'm the publishing editor of this new book, A Face from Uranus, Correspondence Between Ted Burr and Henry Bellman, 1943 to 1945. I am Bonnie DeCasey, and I am the queen of the girl geeks. I am working with Lenny on... Together, we are Ecclesia Arts. <laughs> I am so excited to be working on this project that actually started almost 30 years ago. You want to talk about that? Yes. Um, I was a director of theater at Lake Erie College, and I was given an opportunity to start a theater company, and I started Ecclesia Arts with Bonnie's help as the managing director. Summer of 97. Yes. Summer of 97. And uh, I want to just tell you that the word Ecclesia has been with me for a long time, and it really kind of came to mean what my approach to theater and arts and life is, and that is there historically there was a theater in Greece, the Ecclesia, and it brought together ritual, sacred ritual, it brought together plays, the Greek plays, and it also was where the seat of democracy took place, so people went there to actually vote. And to me, bringing all of that together as a civic society um, is what I feel like we're doing with Ecclesia Arts. Absolutely. We bring together the diversity of elements into a harmonious whole. Absolutely. And I got on board in 1997, and this is, we've been friends for all these times. All this time. <laughs> <laughs> and this year, oh my gosh, I got involved in the past, the present, and the future <laughs> of this entire project, which we are going to talk about a little bit today. So I think we need to start with the past in order to get to the future, which is what Lenny has in his hands right here. And this is amazing. You want to talk about the letters? Yes. So I mentioned Ted Burr, who is on the cover of this book. Well, when Ted Burr was a 76-year-old man, uh, he was my friend. We were together in theater. And um, I discovered that he had uh, a life uh, in his childhood that was gender confused. And we made a film about that called Letters to Uranus. Well, Ted this is amazing. transcribed the letters that he had in a box held for 55 years that the widow of Henry Bellaman sent back to Ted all of the letters that he and Henry uh, that he had sent to Henry. And so together they have this complete correspondence. And Ted, this is the actual binder that Ted yeah, real, gave to me. Real letters here. This was back that when there was out. this was back when there was a word processor. <laughs> <laughs> With a little lums up one line at a time that he could see. 76 year old man typed all of these letters for me so that I could read them. And from the moment I read them, I knew that this was going to be a story that was going to have a long-term effect. Huge impact on society, humanity. So now where are the real letters? Well, the original letters Ted bequeathed me in 2003 because Ted had had a health scare and before anything happened to the letters, he wanted to make sure that they were in my possession and that he gave me permission to work on a TV series or a film. I carried those letters for 20 years with me until I published them in this book. I recently, in February, <laughs> donated the original letters to the University of Mississippi Archives. And the reason is Henry Bellaman and his wife, Catherine Bellaman, already had their papers stored at the University of Mississippi. Wow. And coincidentally, three of Ted's letters were found that didn't make it back in the return. Oh. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I did not know that. Yes. I was informed by a professor who did his dissertation on the life and works of Henry Bellum, and his name was Professor Harry Bain. And he told me, I saw a few Ted Burr letters in his paper, which led me to go to the University of Mississippi archives, find the letters, ask them if they would allow me, courtesy of the archives, to print those. And they are also printed in this book. Yes. So it, it said to me when I was there, this is the home that I think belongs for, for, for their letters. And so they've created a special collection called the Ted Burr and Henry Bellaman Collection. And it's, it sits adjacent to the Henry and Catherine Bellaman wow. Collection. That's amazing. That's absolutely <laughs> amazing. I love, I love when things are preserved like that. 
that they're... And they were archival quality. Ted had preserved wow. them so well, and he put them in chronic, chronological order. Wow. And they said to me, even at the archives, they said, we've never received an intake oh of where everything is already filed. A huge <laughs> piece of history yes. to preserve. Yes. It's amazing. And these letters, now what year? The, they were 1943. Yeah, they began September 20th of 1943, and they went all the way till um, June 16th, uh, 1945, when Henry Bellman died. That's amazing. And as many of you know, sometimes preserving on paper like that, it, it disintegrates. I mean, that's not easy to preserve that stuff. So the fact that you got them to the museum... Well, the thing is, I, I, I didn't really handle them for 20 no, years. No, but Ted... Had to he, he, yeah, he kept them in a cardboard <laughs> box for, for 55 years. By the time I saw them, they were 55 years old. I held them for 23 years, so we're talking about 78 years. years. Oh and the reason I, I knew that they had archival quality, yeah. so I didn't really handle them. Yeah. And I had this binder to work Which, from yeah, in order to write. That to write. to do that, though. That Absolutely. Them. Brilliant man to do that. Yes, because he knew, he knew by that point that I wanted to tell his story someday. America was not ready for the story in 2000 when I first saw yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, yes. I mean, I'm reading this story about this young androgynous uh, boy writing to a famous author in New York City. And think about 1943. I mean, I know that we're all in 2023 right now. Right. But it's sometimes hard to like think, you know, pre-war. I yeah. mean, this was 1943. Absolutely. Right and when so, World War II was starting. And so here's a young person who struggled one, wondering if he was an in-between gender and he didn't know where he fit in. Mm -hmm. And he writes to this author who had a novel where there was a character, Jamie Wakefield, too pretty to be a boy. Mm -hmm. So he so identified, he wrote to the author, and that's what started their correspondence. It's amazing. Yes. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, so since then, I've done a lot of research on Henry and Catherine Bellman's life so that I could create a complete story on both ends of what was going on between them and in their own worlds at the same time. And that's the limited TV series that I'm really happy. I am so excited <laughs> about this. So, Lenny and I started working together, like seriously collaborating about two months ago, three months ago. I can't believe it's only been that long. We've accomplished a so lot much. in two months. <laughs> and when I got on board, it is a journey that I feel like YouTube and social media is able to like digest the way I did it because I started with the book. That's how I started this because the book was published in December, correct? Correct. That was right. Okay. So I, I, I talked to Lenny around Christmas. I got the book. I read the book. I was so moved. And then you went to Mississippi then. Yes, that's you when were, I went. Yeah, that's when Lenny was in Mississippi. So there were things happening. You and I got together again in April, and I got reacquainted with the movie because I knew you were doing the movie back in. I was starting to show the screening again. Yeah, the yeah, screening, screening again. again. So I reacquainted myself with the movie. Now I knew Ted Burr too. I mean, I worked with Ted Burr. At Ecclesia Theater, theater. When we, <laughs> which was amazing. When we started our theater company, yes. the very first play we did was the pinnacle of Western civilization, yes. and that was Oedipus Rex. And <laughs> we cast Ted as the blind, wise sage, uh, and it, it was a beautiful performance where he was up in the balcony of a Greco-Roman structure. Amazing hovering over the audience, yes. but Bonnie got to work with him too. Yes, so I, I mean, the fact that I was able to work with Ted, I knew Ted as an older man, and then to go back in history and read the book and then see the movie again, I mean, it infected me a great deal because there is so much happening now in 2023 that makes all of this relevant. And the future in all of this is the TV series. So Lenny... Honored me with the privilege <laughs> the first of person reading his yeah. entire <laughs> six part six part <laughs> series, <laughs> which I have been doing this past week. I was an emotional wreck <laughs> in a good way, in a good way, a very good way, because this is one of the most powerful pieces I have I have ever. I mean, it is when I say this is good, it is good. I mean, and I'm not just saying this because you are my I know, friend. I, do I mean, know this that. is like as a as a as a as a critic of 
film books my whole life. I have a degree in English. I mean, I, I really felt what he was doing. So now I want you to talk a little bit about the TV series. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in six parts, I um, cover their first meeting. Um, first of all, between through, Ted and between Henry, Ted and Henry, Henry through letters. But the letters soon fade away because their psyches are engaged in such a relationship that they start to intertwine their imaginative worlds, their um, fictions. Both of them wrote, uh, Ted also wrote a novel. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a combination of where their fictions, some of their scenes in their work come to life. And when you see, when, when you hear the words come out of Ted's mouth, the way he speaks, this man was not only, um, what's the word? Um, he was just so eloquent. Eloquent. That's the yeah. word I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm not being eloquent. <laughs> That's okay. Well, because you know why? You're feeling the emotion of all of, of, of what I know. it's about. <laughs> Ted's writing is so beautiful. It's beautiful. For a 19 year old, you, it's hard to believe. Yes. It's hard also to believe about the passion he had for the arts. This young person was involved. He, he played the piano. He sang opera. He wrote poems. Yes. He uh, sang in churches. He wrote that novel, like I said, and uh, and danced. He just he was, all while having this gender confusion running through him in his life. Yes, and Which, that's and I think that is another really key point of this material. And I think it's, a, it's also helpful to know that somebody with a very creative artistic bent, this is what I think really saved him. Yes. In terms of, he was distraught inwardly about not fitting into society. Mm -hmm. And yet he took all of that frustration, um, all of that confusion, mm -hmm. and he channeled it into yes. art. Yes. And to me, uh, that is that is a, that is something that I think is instructive and inspirational to anyone to say. Anyway, yeah, find absolutely. the things in life that are your passion to help you through some of the it's things that you are, you're yeah, you're you're challenged with. Yeah. Exactly, and, and we, we both know that ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's why we're attracted to this material. Yeah. <laughs> it is all everyone. I mean, if there isn't a person out there who hasn't had a struggle that will not relate to this story as a human story. This is not. Um, Male, female, gay, straight. This is about human humanity. humanity, which I love. I mean, and when I say that Lenny has taken this to the next level, he has taken it to the next level. So can, can you kind of talk a little bit about what happens? Just like um, the thread a little bit, just a tiny piece. A little bit of the thread. Um, well, let me first say that what I'm really excited about, this material lends itself. To the process. To, the, I mean, yeah, the process. Got it. Yes. Lends itself to being um, a wide, to, uh, uh, applicable to a wide audience. This mm -hmm. isn't for young people. This isn't for old people. This is it, it's for everyone. everyone. Everyone has a way into this, and I think that's that's something that old art, old movies, and things used to do. Mm -hmm. It used to be about the entire community yes. could watch that. We've gotten more into our niches, yes. Which is you're right. which. You're there's right. there's something you're good. Right. There's yeah. something good about that too. Mm -hmm. But there's something good when a real work of art can actually draw all of humanity, and that's back to the Greeks. They yes. all went oh to the God. theater. <laughs> they all went to the theater to reflect on their lives in society. Yes. And so that's kind of what our my mission and Bonnie's mission is is to have work that. Anybody can enter into. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of the thread is that um, uh, Ted is confessing his life to Henry. Henry is trying to help him um, conform a little bit so that he could live life a little better in the world as it existed in 1943. Mm -hmm. However, from a modern perspective, we feel some of the pain mm -hmm. of the fact that this young person who was full of such life and vitality um, clipped some of those parts of him so that he could live mm -hmm. in society. But at the same time, he could have blossomed so much more had he lived today. Oh, and I absolutely. think that that's what people really get in touch with, yeah. is that his heart and soul was really ahead of its time, too. Yes, and, absolutely. And that absolutely. if he only had the chance to be fully who he was, he could have contributed so much more to the world. However... 
That's where That's I come where in is that <laughs> he, he trusted me so much with his story mm -hmm. to say, I'm trusting you to tell my story. And for me, it's me giving a chance to bring life to this 19 year old who was so extraordinary to bring him to the modern world and say, look what he contributed to society and look what he can contribute to society today by listening Absolutely. to his words. I know. So what Lenny and I have just done. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So Lenny and I have filmed a one hour documentary style presentation um, in a historic theater. And this is what we're going to kind of introduce you to first on this new channel. Yes. And I am more than grateful that. Bonnie's expertise in the digital media world got me from, I have a theater background. And so I, I'm, I'm accustomed to doing everything live. Mm -hmm. And I did presentations live and, and, you know, people really enjoy them. However, there's a limitation to how many people I could reach. Exactly. And Bonnie saw the potential for well, me exactly. to, to, to move into a digital world exactly. and bring that same information to a wider range of people so that they can appreciate it. And, and so that's what we're doing. Exactly. So what Lenny was doing, so in April and May, he was doing some book signings and presentations, which were wonderful because I love the face-to-face -face interaction. Unfortunately, in this day and age, without like big budgets and the ability to you know travel extensively, you can't get in front of a large amount of people. Right. So the fact that we're able to bring this to the world via YouTube is like my passion right now. I mean, I am so excited that Lenny is able to tell this story on this medium. And I think it is going to be an amazing journey because we don't even know like what's happening next, well, which is the magic. We don't know like it mapped out, but yeah. what we do know is I am going to begin to tell the story of the pilot of the series in the name of Jamie Wakefield um, to you on YouTube. I'm going to bring the material via me doing some performing, some description, some um, locations. I'm going to bring you the feel of what this TV series yeah. is going to feel like in this medium to you directly now. I'm not waiting for Netflix to come knocking on my door, although I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like, you know what, life is short. Exactly. And I also feel like I have a lot of this in me. It's been in me for a long time and I want to share it. Absolutely. And I don't want to wait to share Absolutely. it. I want, this is the time now that I think, well, I think we all know in society post pandemic, Which is exactly, it's about sharing what we, who we are now. That's exactly what Ted did. He didn't, yes, wait. he didn't wait. He didn't wait. He didn't say what's going to, he said, I'm going, he saw King's Row in the theater and he said, I resonate with this character and I'm going to write a letter. Henry Bellman, and he did. He was courageous in doing that. Really, we're following in his we his career, his, his risky, courageous Ted footsteps. Know, Ted didn't know what was going to happen next. No, he didn't know it was going. He didn't have this all mapped out. No, but he had a little inner instinct when he read the letters that yes. he tells you, like, I'm not sure why I feel to yes. do this, but something is compelling me. Compelling, you know, like, <laughs> compelling. And then he also talked about how the arts were his gods. Yes. And, that, and, that, and that that's the way he felt he was to express. Exactly. So here we are really following in his footsteps. We are. We're doing exactly what he did in 1943. 1943. Yes. Oh, 80 years ago. <laughs> yes. And Ted actually, um, he would have been 99 this year. His birthday is in two, two days. days. Two days. July 26th. 1924 he was born next amazing. year will be his centennial i know amazing yes so there is a huge past to this story i mean the letters ted growing up in bellevue ohio the small town aspect of it um king's row which ronald reagan got his start in the movie henry bellavan there's a huge past 
It's a whole. It spans a whole century. It does. This because is a century long. Yeah, Henry Bellman's King's Row was about turn of the century. Yes. Horse and buggy. Which, era. by the way, is so interesting <laughs> as content. If you like learning about early America, is amazing. It's Small midtown, yes. midwestern town. Yes, which a lot of you know our our grandfather's relatives grew up in. I yeah. mean, it's, it's it's amazing to hear about these stories. So we've got that aspect. And then the contrast that Henry Bellman became a famous author and lived in New York City at an exclusive Ansonia hotel yes. and hobnob with, with, the, Lucille the, with Lucille Ball, <laughs> Sarah Bernhardt, and all the people of that time. They're all going to be part of the fabric of that TV series. Yes. So you get small town rural because Ted was from Bellevue. Yes. And you're getting the top echelon of New York City all, all in the together. same it's amazing. series. I know. Plus there are flashbacks <laughs> that go back to South Carolina, yes. know, the roots of Henry and Catherine. So I know. It just, it's just this all-encompassing uh, intermingling of these elements to, to create a very uh, dramatic journey that goes forward. Yes. It, it, that's why we... We called this the timeless, a timeless journey. It is timeless. That's what it is. It keeps referring back and forth to each other. Exactly. And the fact that, I mean, I literally just finished reading episode six yesterday. Was it yesterday? It was Saturday. And I was so moved and blown away by the work. I mean, this is so exciting to me. To find out what happens next. I mean, this is a, this is this is our journey too. We're on a journey. It started now. thirty years ago. Yes, and, and here we are together again. Here it is today. So, our hope is that all of you are excited with this journey because it's 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 going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be educational it's and hopefully going to inspirational. Be inspirational and we, we think it's something that can actually help society yes which especially is what Ted wanted. yeah we need to be a bridge now yes. where we're, we're, we have lots of divisions yeah uh, and this is the kind of material yeah. that takes all of that into consideration but tries to find a middle way to, exactly. to bridge everybody into an understanding of greater humanity and and the kindness that these characters have brought. I mean, each character has their own internal struggle, but in the end, it's like humanity, kindness, courage, they're all there. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So we're excited. Well, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to begin this journey with the help and support of Bonnie, who has the skills and talents to complement the work and, and, and bring it it's going to go further, much, much further, further this way. I'm excited. And I am thrilled to, again, be working <laughs> with Lenny on a project that I am absolutely passionate about. He has brought me in each step of the way in a way that it has unfolded in such an exciting way that I think all of you are going to see as this unfolds. And um, we're ready. We're ready for to see what happens next. So... Subscribe to the channel. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. Share it on social media. Um, because we, we will be back doing more. Lenny will be doing some pieces. I will be talking to him. More yes, about the we'd like to share it in real time with you. As, yes. as, as it's, you're going to be part of a, a, an unfolding of a TV series. And definitely leave a comment after you watch the you know, the documentary, let us know how you're feeling. You yes. know, what do you think of this? I mean, we're we're really curious to see, you know. Well, it's also going to be helpful in the feedback also as, exactly. as I continue to develop the series in more intricate detail. Exactly. So th thank you for, thank thank you for you being so here with much. us. Oh, my gosh. And um, more coming. More coming, you guys. We'll see you guys later. Ciao, everyone. Bye-bye.